Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant Tech Talk. Proof of storage is a cryptographic mechanism that's mainly used to check the validity of a remote file. This is accomplished by transferring an encoded replica of the data to a server, which is then subjected to a challenge response process to ensure the validity of the data. This mechanism is typically employed when evaluating the effectiveness of a cloud storage server. In today's video, we'll look at what the proof of storage consensus mechanism is. As always, if you find this topic interesting, then you can let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. You can also let us know if you find it interesting by saying so in the comments section down below. Now let's jump into it. So what is the proof of storage consensus mechanism? There are two types of participants in a network that uses proof of storage. One of them is referred to as a prover, while the other is known as a verifier. Provers are participants who are responsible for storing data, while verifiers verify whether the provers are storing data or not. Verifiers assign challenges to provers who must answer with a proof based on the proof of storage mechanism in use. There are a multitude of proof methods that are derivatives of proof of storage, with each derivative having some key differences in their features. But with that said, they have a lot in common as well. We'll have a look at some of the properties that are more commonly shared among proof of storage mechanisms. One is by making use of a secret verification key generated during setup. Users can validate the data that's stored, for example, making it privately verifiable. Likewise, data can also be publicly verified, but without the risk of being compromised or breached. This is done with parties making use of accessible public data, like a public verification key, for example. Without stored data, no information may be utilized to allow a prover to construct a legitimate proof. This increases transparency since it's helpful in decentralized storage networks, since it eliminates the need for users to rely on other users or verifiers to produce secret keys. Also, verifiers can simply issue many challenges to provers and aggregate associated proofs to extract and recreate the stored data. Users can dynamically update externally stored data instead of having to create a whole new setup every time the data requires a change. In addition to this, provers can't allocate their labor to other provers while assuring verifiers that they did it themselves, whether it be storage, computation, or proof generation. Also, throughout the process that validates proofs, the identities of provers can be easily authenticated by using tools such as digital signatures. Proofs are only valid for a specific amount of time. This attribute can be used to minimize the likelihood of forgeries by having provers react to challenges within a certain time frame, which is dependent on the proof of storage method. So they would be deprived of the time they would need to generate a forgery. Also, the way proof of storage methods are structured could have an effect on operations that accomplish beneficial work or storage. For example, making them more useful. So there we have it. Numerous blockchain-based cloud storage initiatives are conducting research and development pertaining to proof of storage methods. Filecoin, for example, is developing a proof of storage method known as proof of replication that can be used to confirm that data has been copied to its own dedicated physical storage space. Other projects like Storage are focusing on improving established proof of storage methods known as proof of retrievability. So that's our breakdown of the proof of storage consensus mechanism. If you found this video interesting or insightful, don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.